Are you going to Santorini for the first time and don't know where to begin? You click on the right video. I just came back from my first trip to Santorini and I've got to tell you, this Greek island is not just a picture-perfect backdrop for Instagram photos. I find Santorini the one and only travel destination with so much to offer. From breathtaking landscapes to rich history, incredible geological wonders, and delicious food and wine, this island has it all. I know why people come to Santorini now. One more week, not no. ready yet. <laughs> You need at least a full week to explore this amazing island. But don't worry, by the end of this video, you will have a much better idea of what you want to do and how to spend seven days on this island. Day one. So you just landed in Santorini. Santorini! If you are coming from the US or Canada, you're probably feeling jet-lagged. If you're coming from the UK, lucky you. First things first, let's check into our hotel. I'll talk more about the logistics of where to stay and how to get around in another video, but for now, we stayed in a village called Pyrogos, and it turns out to be the best neighborhood to stay in. First off, it's just a 10-minute drive from the airport and to Fira which is the capital of Santorini. And this is the Airbnb you can get for around 200 euros per night. Private jacuzzi, check. Sunrise, check. Amenities, check. Modeled interiors, check. Finding the right place to stay is particularly important when it comes to Santorini. Let's face it, we all come to Santorini for one shared interest to enjoy the stunning views and having a private balcony with views it's just half the trip done well already so book a room with a view if you can squeeze in a private jacuzzi in your budget that's even better another thing you shouldn't miss out on is the Mediterranean food I know you can have Mediterranean food pretty much everywhere in the world but you don't always get this much joy out of food, do you? I mean, check out this squid. Not to mention, everything else was fresh and nourishing and just delicious. We devoured everything we ordered, including a delicious baklava. Day 2 Congratulations! You woke up early enough to make yourself a simple breakfast and catch a beautiful sunrise. You can hear the roosters in the distance. <laughs> and all because you are still jet lagged. No sarcasm there. You actually need to wake up early if you want to go on today's adventure, which is a three hour hike from Fira to Ia. Inarguably, this hike is the best thing to do in Santorini. It's just a perfect way to see this island all at once. This is insane. During the hike, you get to see and walk alongside the caldera, volcanic cliffs, the blue Aegean Sea, interesting plants and flowers, and the postcard-looking villages, and of course, blue dome churches. This is just unbelievable. This place has infinite amount of unbelievable views from every angle, from every direction. It's pretty steep, huh? This one? Yeah, and this is the sunny side. It's a little warmer yeah. than before. It was an easy hike and it became a little bit of a challenging hike. That's why you need to start as early as possible to avoid the scorching sun and pack enough water for hydration. There aren't many rest areas. We found one snack bar in the middle and there's no single water fountain because you cannot drink tap water in Santorini. So here's a pro tip. Get a collapsible water bottle that takes up less space in your backpack. What's that? Mini fence? Mm. This actually helps a lot. 
And if you sweat a lot, make sure to bring a portable fan like this. You are gonna need it. Lastly, don't forget to wear comfy shoes and protect your skin from the harsh Santorini sun. I guess this is the end of the trail. <laughs> you made it, you did it! So it's quite a demanding hike, but I guarantee that you'll be so glad that you did this. It's one of the best memories I have of my Santorini trip. As soon as we got off the trail, we found a restaurant to have a lunch and cool off. At the end of the hike, we found ourselves pretty tired, hot, and sleepy. So even though we were right in the middle of Ia, we decided to head back to our Airbnb and explore Ia another time. Back from hiking, we are relaxing by the jacuzzi and with a nice view. And I took a sweet nap and woke up to a sunset. Santorini is also famous for its beautiful sunset. And having dinner with a sunset view is a very popular thing to do. But here's a pro tip. If you don't want to end up paying an arm and leg for a crowded table, avoid Ia and Fira. You can still find a restaurant with a sunset view elsewhere, like in Pyrgos. Sure, the view might be a little bit obstructed, but you can actually enjoy your dinner in a more intimate and relaxing atmosphere. Remember, you can still go to Ia and Fira to catch the sunset. You just don't need to eat there. But here's a catch about this restaurant. So it was located in winding alleys in the old castle area, which sounds so nice in theory, except that we actually got lost, like literally. Head south, then make a U-turn. <laughs> Might be a clue that there's a restaurant. Your destination is on the right. Rosemary! Also, the alleys weren't lit at night, so make sure to have a flashlight with you if you plan to go here for the sunset. Other than that, I would definitely recommend this place. Day three. How about starting the day with a strong Greek coffee? First time trying Greek coffee. I got a single shot and he got the double shot. Greek coffee is made with a very fine grind of beans. And since it's boiled, the grind is present in the coffee. So you should not drink up the whole cup, but slowly favor each and every sip. <laughs> is it bitter or is it? No, not bitter at all. It's just very strong. It's earthy, very earthy. Personally, my great discovery was yellow Greek sourdough. I still dream about this bread. It was simply the best bread I've ever had in my life. So good the bread. So if anyone knows where I can find this yellow Greek sourdough in New York City, please let me know in the comments. I'm so happy we found this. This is such a good start to the day. Having breakfast in an authentic and local town is one of my favorite parts of traveling. And seeing a local selling fresh seafood off of his pickup truck was just priceless. We don't need to do anything anymore today. Our day is done. I was just kidding. The restaurant was only a couple of minutes drive from our Airbnb. So we took some relaxing jacuzzi time before we headed out to explore more. I have a view of Pyrgos. Pyrgos. And that's where you should head next. The ancient capital, located in the highest settlement in Santorini. Did I mention Pyrgos was the ancient capital of Santorini? We're going up the castle right there. Pyrgos has the optimal location to observe the neighboring islands and protect itself against attacks. The current castle was built in the medieval ages by the Venetians. 
The castle itself has been torn apart, and now what we can see are mostly ruins. A couple of medieval churches, and lots and lots of souvenir shops. These are all hidden in these winding alleys. In other words, it's the perfect place to get lost, snap nice photos, and buy souvenirs. I'm gonna try my new scarf that I just got. <laughs> covers my arms from the sun. Another reason Pyrogos is a hidden gem in Santorini is the abundance of wineries. We knew we were going to check out at least two wineries during our vacation, so we went with this winery first. And here's a tip. If you're not a drinker but want to tag along your group to a winery, this estate should be your choice. It's one of the few wineries in Pyrgos that serve a full meal. And the food was good. Meanwhile, my wine enthusiast husband was eager to review the Santorini wine, aka Santo wine. Zesty, flavorful, no bitter notes, well dry, mm. like they taste like the drier soil kind of. It's not oh, super yeah. watery and stuff. Yeah. He seemed to be in a good mood. So their wine must be pretty good. After tasting, we were offered to a quick tour of the winery as well. All in all, we had a really nice time here. Are you having a nice time too? It's time to hit the like button and click subscribe right here. Now that you've done that, I'm ready to show you the capital of Santorini, Fira. You will find yourself in Fira at least once in your Santorini vacation. You'll be here to take in all the amazing views and to catch the beautiful sunset. You can also be here to dine out or grab a drink at one of the restaurants and bars with a stunning view. You might be here to do souvenir shopping or pick up something you forgot to bring or you can just be here to go to historical museums or big supermarkets. There are so many good reasons to visit Fira. By the way, if you're starting to confuse Fira with Ia, here's the difference. Ia is the epitome of the picture-perfect Santorini that you've seen all over the media. This Korean commercial I saw a decade ago is just still stuck in my head. And no, this video is not sponsored by Pokari Sweat. It should be. Fira, on the other hand, might not be the most photographed village like Ia, but in my opinion, it's the best to look out for the incredible geography, thanks to its central location in the caldera. It's like, you can't stop taking pictures here, because like everywhere you look, it's picturesque. <laughs> Also in Fira, I found things were more affordable and accessible compared to Ia. It was kind of the perfect place to grab some snacks on the streets and just to stroll around the infinite winding alleys while soaking up all the incredible views. Be aware of donkey poops. I know you'll be mesmerized by the views, but don't forget to watch your steps. No high heels, no flip flops. We need to walk up these stairs. After a long day of exploring, we spent our last night in Paragus. Day 4 Before leaving Paragus, there's one more stop to make. That is, the oldest working monastery on this island. Built in the 17th century, this monastery has attracted many visitors and trekkers over the years. I really like that this church maintained a cycladic architecture but added more colors and texture to it. Inside the church was bright and peaceful. It was also a good place to buy a souvenir for our family. My grandmother had these boxes, like something similar to this, with a, like Mother of Pearl. We ended up getting a small painting resembling this church. While standing on the top of the hill, 
we noticed a new construction right down the hill and found out that it was a new monastery that will be completed in a couple of years. We surely have to revisit this place. I have to see the completion of that monastery. And speaking of coming back, one of the reasons why we wanted to stay in a different neighborhood was to see which one we liked the most in Santorini. And we know that we like beach. The second village we tried out on this trip was near Kamari Beach, just another 10 minute drive south from Pyrgos. And this is what you can get for 200 euros per night here. You can rent a whole house with a plunge pool, a big porch with an outdoor dining table, and one studio interior. You don't get the caldera view in the south, but you can have the beach and vibrant streets just within walking distance. As for the beach itself, I was pleasantly surprised how nice it was. The water was so clear and refreshing. It feels so refreshed. It's not harsh, like, like a sandy beach. It's kind of bright and harsh, but here you feel like I don't even need a sunglasses. Super relaxing, super chilling. The black sand and solid rocks were rather interesting. The first impression was great and we couldn't wait to come back with proper swimsuit. To cap the day off, we tried a few staple Greek dishes in this neighborhood. This is a traditional Greek tomato pancake. It's made with grated tomatoes, onions, and herbs and feta cheese. Tomato flavored potato pancakes. Mm. Really good. We also tried Greek feta cheesecake. It's more savory than sweet, making an excellent appetizer or even a small lunch. Day 5. Once you've taken all the natural beauty of Santorini, it is time to learn about the ancient history of this island. First things first, we stop by a bakery for a quick breakfast. Our absolute favorite was the orange cake. I know it's more of a dessert than breakfast, but I have to tell you to get the orange cake whenever you can when you're in Greece. They are that good. After breakfast, we drove to a mountain on hilly roads. And where are we going, you ask? Back to the 15th century BC to see the ancient Phira. Driving here was amazing because of the view, but also a bit anxiety inducing because of the height and the very narrow roads. Two car can fit. Okay, good. Ooh. If I had a 4x4 here, uh, I would be a little bit scared to come up here. With that said, you can hike all the way up to the top. It'll be a long hike, but it can be more relaxing and maybe safer depending on what kind of driver you are. 100 meters, you will arrive at your destination. After quite a drive, we have finally arrived at the top. Another thing to note is that they have quite a limited parking, so get there early in the morning. The ancient settlement is 365 meters high, and it's so surreal to be so close to the clouds. What's even more astonishing is how the early settlers created such an advanced and sophisticated city at the top of a mountain in the Hellenistic period. There was a paved road, a drainage system, a theater, market, temples, cemeteries, and the list goes on. Even if you are not a history buff and don't care much about the ruins and all that, you will still be mesmerized by the tremendous views this site offers. The unobstructed views of the Aegean Sea and the villages including Kamari and Parisa were good enough reasons to visit here. 
So the ancient theater, it has a lot to see, a lot to explore. I've been here for like an hour and a half so far, and I think we have another half minute to see, to explore more. This is really the, um, for me, the highlight of this trip. And here's yet another highlight. Ia. Ia is what you first think of Santorini. Whitewashed house, blue dome churches, stunning views of the caldera. It is one of the most photographed places in the world and the most crowded place in Santorini. Here, people are lining up to take a photo in that specific spot. So here's a pro tip. Get there in the early afternoon. Don't wait until the sunset. We are heading to Ia. Now it's 3.30. Finding street parking will be very unlikely even around 3 p.m. We see a paid parking here, like right here, for five hours. It's 12 euros, which isn't terrible. We found a street parking. We missed the entrance to the parking lot and ended up finding a spot on the street. But if I come back, I would just pay and park here instead. It was really close to the main area of Ia and it wasn't so safe to walk back to where we parked our car at night. Once you arrive in Ia, explore the town and its hidden alleys. And here's my two cents. Don't sweat on finding the perfect photo zone and waste your energy. In my opinion, you can get beautiful photos almost everywhere here. Avoid a crowd, find your own spot. You will be able to snap more memorable photos that way. And now that become a popular spot. Make a trend, don't follow a trend. Here's another tip. Find a nice restaurant to eat and don't worry too much about the sunset view. You can have sunset views pretty much everywhere in Ia, but you can't find great meals everywhere. So we found a restaurant called Roca. First of all, I was so happy to see the yellow Greek sourdough again. And their food was so colorful and flavorful. The presentation was also really nice. Best barbecue I've had this year. I think it's the same thing, but it tastes much better. It was a great meal with a reasonable price. I highly recommend this restaurant. Once you finish your meal, it's time to burn some calories and walk down hundreds of steps all the way down to the cliff. Once you're at the bottom of the cliff, you have arrived at the Amodi Bay. There are a couple of restaurants here that you can check out. I personally felt like they are a bit overpriced and I also wanted to see the sunset halfway off the cliff, not all the way down at the bay. So I didn't go to any restaurants here. Instead, we had a small snack break and a little bit of walking around. Oh, here we go, all the way to the top. If you just want to really get a good photo with the sun, like 30 minutes before the sunset time and no one's here, whereas when you see up there, there are a lot of people. We even have a room to set up a tripod because literally no one is here. We were able to get photos without people in the background. We still want to take some photos up there. We still have 30 minutes and I think we have enough time to get there. And we made it just in time. Ia was magical. And as long as you don't chase the touristy activities, you'll be able to enjoy just the best of Ia. Day six. We started the day with a big brunch at a popular spot known for pancakes and a variety of breakfast menu, including grilled sourdough, shakshuka, avocado toast, egg benedict, and more. 
We ended up coming here two days in a row because it was so convenient and the atmosphere was pretty nice. So check this place out if you find yourself in this area. Ah, so good. You need this in Santorini. After driving 25 minutes to the southern tip of the island, we arrive at the Acro tree. And I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. To visit one of the most important archaeological sites, the excavation site is one of the most well-preserved Bronze Age settlements in the world. Ironically, thanks to the disastrous volcanic eruption in the 16th century BC. The volcanic ashes covered up the sediment, leaving the buildings and artifacts in an excellent state. Here you can witness how sophisticated and advanced the Minoan civilization was. By looking at the multi-story buildings, elaborate plumbing systems, and intricate artwork. That we've been seeing this everywhere. Like, right? Our shopping bags had this painting and everything, and we found the place that this painting came from. This famous fresco of a young fisherman can be seen in another museum in Fira. And this is why I recommend getting the bundle of three tickets so you get a complete picture of the ancient history of Santorini. And here are a few heads up. You can purchase a guided tour on site. Tour guides are here and she had two people kind of waiting for others to join so they can reduce the cost uh, because it'll be 120 euros per guide. And it's a good idea to bring a portable fan since there's no AC running here. I brought this portable fan and it helped a lot. We found one more usage for the fan. When you travel to the smoking friendly countries and cities, and if you're a non-smoker, use this. I did a whole review of this fan in another video that I'll link right here. By the way, if you want to experience more about that volcanic eruption, you can visit another museum called Lost Atlantis Experience. It's more geared towards children, but if you are into Atlantis stories, you will definitely enjoy it and you will most certainly enjoy Ladies and gentlemen, Red Beach! The combination of the red hue sand and blue water is simply stunning. However, this beach can be quite challenging to access. Here's what I mean. We are here at the Red Beach and we parked um, like right here. So we, you need to do a little bit of a hike to get to the beach. The hike starts off easy. Oh my god, look at these waves. Woo. But as you get closer to the beach, it gets windier and the trail gets rougher. It is a combination of the wind, strong wind and very rocky trail. That's challenging. Then the trail becomes pretty flat for a while, but I started to feel that this place could be quite dangerous. These small red rocks, red stones are very sharp, so be careful of the, the red stones. Wow, and look at how, look at the wave. Oh my god, it looks deadly. I will not be so close to the water, and there's like the marking. You should be behind the marks. These rocks behind me, these cliffs, look pretty brutal. Woo! So I see a little beach area over there, very limited seat, um, umbrellas and stuff, but like honestly, I wouldn't want to stay here that long because it's quite scary. <laughs> the waves are huge uh, and like really like windy. Sand is mixed with this kind of a, um, like a dry material. So it's very like swampy almost near the water. It's not a relaxing beach, uh, but it's again breathtaking like 
you know, out of this world view. I would say like I would just take nice photos here and you know, just explore a little bit, but I would not plan on staying here for a beach day. Come here prepared with the proper shoes and be careful about your surroundings. But it's definitely worth visiting, for sure. After having enough adventure, we were so ready to have a relaxing beach time. Good news is, Santorini has us covered. We are back at Kamari Beach. It was a bit overcast and getting into the water was a bit rough. Oh, it's a big one coming! But as soon as you are in, you get to enjoy the clear and refreshing water with a stunning view. It was just the perfect way to end another great day in Santorini. Day 7. It's our last full day in Santorini. And we saved one of the top things to do for last. The Volcanic Islands Tour. And here's a quick history of the geology of Santorini. Santorini was once a single island, but three volcanic eruptions, including catastrophic volcanic eruption in 1620 BC, created overlapping calderas that we know of today. This eruption also caused a tsunami that is believed to destroy the Minoan civilization on the neighboring island of Crete. Some people believe that the legend of Atlantis refers to Santorini for that reason. But the story doesn't end there. About 14,000 years after the big eruption, there were two more major eruptions that created the two little islands. And we are going to explore these two islands today. We decided to go on this boat tour last minute. We need to get uh, on a cable car and find a parking and hopefully we'll have some time to have some breakfast. The meeting point was in Fira. Instead of taking the stairs, we took a cable car to save energy. It cost us 6 euros per person each way and it was totally worth it. Wow, that was fast, we almost done. It took about 3 minutes. The good thing is there are some coffee shops here, so if you have time, you can grab some quick breakfast. I picked up my ticket while my husband was getting us something to eat. As we were taking a bite of the less ideal cold sandwiches for breakfast, we were getting close to our first stop, Nia Kameni, the newest volcanic island in Santorini. After listening to a brief history about this island, we were given, I believe, 30 minutes to hike up to the top of the mountain to see craters and to explore. Here's the thing. I read some reviews that said this hike was very challenging, but I was surprised to find out that's really not the case. Here, the only thing we need to watch out is the sharp stones. And we've been to the red beach the other day and it was a really windy day and like I don't think this place can be compared to the red beach. Also, I have to break it to you. The volcanic elements we could see here weren't um, that extraordinary. Craters are everywhere here. A lot of small, medium-sized craters. I mean, I've seen bigger craters in Iceland. We start smelling surfer. Oh oh, there it is. And this is the geothermal spot I've been to in Iceland. We can do this anymore. I'm definitely being a snob and also trying to help you set a realistic expectation. With that said, the best thing about this island to me was the breathtaking view. For that view alone, I think it's totally worth the trip. No, no, don't go! <laughs> There's the boat. Next destination is the highly anticipated hot springs. And here's what you need to know about this stop. Boats cannot dock here, so you need to swim 5 to 10 minutes each way 
to reach the springs where the water becomes shallower. I mean, I'm not a strong swimmer, so I was a little bit hesitant at first, especially after reading some scary reviews, but I decided to give it a try and I'm so glad that I did. Colder than I expected. Colder. <laughs> I was able to make that trip just fine with a pool noodle. The water wasn't completely calm, but it wasn't too choppy either. And if you're on the fence, I highly encourage you to try it. I can stand now. Try it. Yes, it's a rocky bottom. Oh boy. Oh, it is. You made it. <laughs> yes. oh, it is warm in here. Wow. It's warmer. Yeah. Yeah. It's not hot, of course, but it's like that warm. It's a little bit chilly, like refreshing. This is like just like room temperature. If, when the river water is this color, we never go into it. <laughs> yeah, it's a bad sign, right? Yeah, it's a bad sign. Just muddy, and this is nice. Like, wow, it's like. Oh, you feel? oh, it does leave like you see like oh, the, the grains and grains. So the water is muddy and reddish because it's rich in minerals such as sulfur and iron. It may stain your clothing and jewelry. Hopefully we'll get some skin benefits. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and oh, actually our joint hurts so much from the hiking. It's proper stuff to make. I slowly head back. People yeah, so are getting they, out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We didn't get to spend a lot of time here since we had to swim back to the boat in time but all in all, it was a fun and very memorable experience. It was fun! <laughs> Our last stop was Therasia, a small island with a population of just over 300 people. It's the second largest island of the Santorini Island group and there were several waterfront restaurants serving fresh seafood to the hungry visitors who just got off of the boat tours, like us. The white wine pairing is perfect. <laughs> The boat was an inexpensive, efficient, and adventurous way to see the caldera from the ocean side and to explore the volcanic side of Santorini. So I shared my link to this volcanic islands tour in the description below. By using the link, you can support this channel even more and I just want to say thank you for that in advance. I only spent a half day on the tour and I still had time to do other things like visiting the last piece of the museum puzzle in Fira. We finally saw the original fresco of this young fisherman that we've been seeing the replica of everywhere, literally everywhere we went in Santorini. I'm so glad that we came here, like now we've been to all three museums, um, you know, of the ancient Fira. But this just really uh, bring it home. Get the three ticket, you'll save a little money and you get to visit all three and it's all three are absolutely worth it. As for the finale, we had to indulge in the delicious and nourishing Greek food again. And did you know that in Greece, wine is considered food? Hmm. Estate Argos is a long-standing winery with centuries-old vines and it caught our eyes with its striking architecture and the huge front vineyard. This place was really nice and we felt a little bit underdressed. The service was great, we particularly enjoyed their pairing options. From the Crete. It was just a perfect way to end our last day while taking a sip of Santo wine surrounded by the vineyard with the views of the blue horizon all at the same time. If you are still watching this, I have a question for you. What would you say is your favorite thing to do among the 20 things that I just listed? And if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe for free. I promise you there'll be more videos like this coming soon. Thanks for watching. See you next time.